Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin, prenatal chiropractor, childbirth educator, and labor doula. In today's episode, we'll be getting the skinny on exercise and fitness during and after pregnancy. My co-host today is Ivy Joeva, a holistic nutritionist specializing in pre- and postnatal nutrition and women's health. She's been a birth doula and childbirth educator for nearly 10 years and teaches prenatal, yin, and restorative yoga. Ivy offers worldwide nutritional support and consults for new and expecting moms and their families at prenatalnutrition.com. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. Our two powerhouse guests in the studio are Dr. Lindsay Matthews and Emily Rusak. Lindsay Matthews is a chiropractor specializing in the biomechanics and movement patterns of the body and restoring mechanical integrity of the nervous system. She lives in Venice, California, where she founded and leads BirthFit a rock star movement aimed at educating and empowering women through their motherhood transition. She's also a coach at Deuce Gym, a strength and conditioning school. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Emily Rusak, also known as Embo. Yep. Embo Slice. That's me. (laughs) Emily has been an athlete for more than 20 years with a broad array of sports and disciplines. As a coach at Deuce Gym, she was introduced to Lindsay and her birth work, and then became involved herself. In 2014, Emily became a labor doula and began training prenatal and postpartum clients and teaching the Birth Fit postpartum series. Her passion for helping women use their voice to choose exactly what they want to do with their bodies has been Emily's mission with Birth Fit. Yep. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. All right. So uh, for a little bit of background, uh, before we get to pregnancy, What's your philosophy on on health and wellness in general? Oh, that's a loaded question. Go. (laughs) You go. Um, So my philosophy, I I think I just really want everyone around me to feel good and feel their best selves. And I think um, fitness is kind of the catalyst, at least what I've seen at CrossFit gyms. Fitness is where it all starts because you can see it. You see people working out. You see people getting fit. Like, I should do that. I want to do that. And then all of a sudden, you start to learn about everything that kind of encompasses being, quote, unquote, fit Mm -hmm. or healthy. Um, So my philosophy, I guess, is I just want that to be the stepping stone into learning about your nutrition and everything that you can do to better your body. Where did you start in your fitness journey? I, I've i always played sports ever since I was a kid. Um, I just did it because it was fun. And that kind of goes along with this doing what feels good. Were you competitive as a kid? Um, I myself was not the most competitive person, but I played on competitive teams, yeah. And then in college, um, I was on University of San Diego's rowing team for one year, um, <laughs> but that was a complete life changer i i understood what it was to be on a division one team um and that's how i found crossfit so that kind of catapulted me into this world of fitness um and i'm just trying to share it with everyone oh great what about she's also the strongest woman in california Uh, yeah (laughs) i read that online yeah (laughs) so i i did a competition called california strongest woman there are stronger women out there than me (laughs) but i have the title you have the title you have the belt yeah is it a belt i got a plaque that's on the wall i got a plaque (laughs) it's pink own it woman what own it yeah absolutely that's unfortunate i was i was trying out for that title it was cool (laughs) it didn't didn't go well for me uh all right Lindsay. what about you what's your background i grew up in texas uh yeah i grew up in texas i also grew up playing sports i grew up playing soccer were you competitive very. I um, I uh, I would play soccer with anybody in the neighborhood. And when we moved from Dallas to a smaller town outside of Austin, they didn't have um, a women's traveling team. And like I was in sixth grade, so I tried out for the men's traveling team. Oh. Like I was like, oh well, they've got to have a spot for me. They didn't. Oh. Um, <laughs> so we run into similar roadblocks. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I grew up um, playing soccer and cheerleading in Texas, so that was actually pretty competitive. Um, and then uh, I blew my knee out uh, my junior year in high school, so that kind of started me on my journey into like the wellness world. And Doing uh, rehab on your knee? 
Yeah. Um, I had this great surgeon. His name is Dr. Jesse DeLee. And uh, he's in San Antonio, Texas. And um, phone number three two three five five five. I don't know if he still <laughs> practices, but he was that. Like I consulted with like three different surgeons. I was like, I have to play in college. He was the only one that told me, "Well, you're going to be as good as well, you're going to be as good as you put effort in to be." Oh. And he made me rehab before surgery. He made me rehab after surgery. He connected me with a Cairo. Um, was that your first introduction to chiropractic? Yeah, which is really interesting that he connected me and then I went back and I decided I didn't want to be an orthopedist based on, you know, my life experiences. And I went back to that Cairo and like shadowed him and I was like, oh, yeah, this is kind of what I wanted to do. But um, yeah, I actually did some um, when I went to Texas A&M, they have a cheerleading squad that's just competitive and they also have intramural soccer, so that's what I did. Oh, perfect. They only have um, guy yell leaders, so anybody that asks is like, why didn't you cheer for a &M? Well, because they have five male yell leaders, hmm. so women can't really be yell leaders there. Hmm. <laughs> so I continued all through that and then played soccer in Cairo school. Um, Where'd you go to school? Southern California University of Health Sciences. Oh, I've heard of it, yes. Because isn't that where you went? No, no, I went to like university. Oh, that's right, yeah. SCUS. I went to SCUS. You went to SCUS. <laughs> I was going to go to SCUS, but it's SCUS. It, it's SCUS. Um, yeah, and then I thought I wanted to work with, you know, athletes my whole life, and I was exposed to the training center and professional athletes, and then I just was like, oh, this isn't, it's not fulfilling to me, and so here I am. Yeah, how did you segue into uh, <laughs> prenatal care? Because, um, I, I mean, they're kind of athletes anyway. Yeah, for sure. And that's, um, you know, kind of what was the whole viewpoint that I was, like, mind-shifting with people. Um, I think I had a client that, um, a few clients where uh, I would get basically all the women that would come into the rehab place I was at. Because um, at the time, I was the only female chiropractor there. Mm -hmm. And I had this... Uh, one woman that was um, an actress and you know they got certain timelines and she was like I want to be in the best shape of my life to get pregnant to have a baby yada yada and I just kept thinking about that well fast forward while I was out treating like on set you either have a lot of time like where you're standing and watching or you have a lot of time where you're just waiting and so that waiting time I just started reading a lot and that's where I started my ICPA diplomat course and I just started reading more because I didn't know anything and this lady would ask me questions other women would come and ask me questions and I would say you know I have no idea because I don't have kids but let's find out the answers um, so I started doing doula training I did hypnobirthing training so just started attending births and I was like okay just well, uh, contagious yeah and, and then I figured you know just as much kind of I don't know can I, the, just as much bullshit as there is in the nutrition or the fitness world or whatever there's just as much bullshit floating around in the birth world so it's like okay somebody's got it like Make let's a bumper sticker yeah let's talk about this <laughs> so, <laughs> so what world. is that bullshit you would say that's that's floating around in the birth oh, world uh, i mean this is this could go into another a whole, a whole path yeah. pick, pick a bullshit any bullshit well in general i just think um birth in america is business like people it's just people are out for money and unfortunately it doesn't um take the woman's needs or desires or wants into account a lot of the times and women are often left you know they're just victims of this horrible situation you know um it's tough i think medicine yeah. in general be has become just incredibly generalized yeah and not individualized There's and no pregnancy uniqueness. is so individual and yeah. each one should be so different and and the system's not set up to support that and no not at all and especially for those that maybe don't have enough money or yeah. can't pay for the individualistic care that's that's basically what you know i see is just a herd yeah and i think something cows. that like i'm sure we will get into but you know what Lindsay has done and what i have began to do is like helping these women understand that their bodies are individual and they can move and they shouldn't be afraid and they can do all these things like the fear-mongering mm -hmm. part of the generalization Inclusion. of that world is yeah. is pretty big and yet, is there is there any fears that you think would be warranted? Like, do you do you ever prescribe um, not to go full out or not to lift weights for certain cases? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, even with 
you know, someone with a knee injury at the gym, like don't lift that weight. You know, not that pregnancy is an injury, of course, or a sickness, but at the same time, yeah, it's we like, don't view it as that. No, not at all. But it's like you have modifications, right? Because your body is changing every single day. There's a certain way you can approach any and everything. Yeah. Um, well, something we tell our women is, do what you've been doing. If you haven't done that before pregnancy, maybe do that after pregnancy. Like, don't try to, something brand new right away. Um, but Well, if you want to talk about uh, <laughs> load specifically. Yeah, like lifting. Um, there's certain ways, like in our online training. I mean, this, we could get really specific now. But in our online training, let's say if there's um, a heavy single push press programmed. So push press is a load overhead. Basically, our women are. <laughs> we're, we're on radio, kind of. Just, I just showed them what I was doing. <laughs> um, uh, which is great stability for the core, great shoulder activation, um, range of motion. And uh, all of our women, we kind of use um, an, a, an ad- adaption of the conjugate programming, which is a whole nother thing, but they're instructed to only take lifts they know they can make. So yeah. that's a huge psychological benefit. Um, they're only ins- they're only allowed to take lifts, uh, three or four lifts that are above 80% and they're warmed up. They've done okay, the hold on a second. proper that's activations. That's very technical and that's good. <laughs> that's good. I want to get there in a second, but I want to get your background, Ivy. We, you're you're uh, not from Texas. You... <laughs> I actually grew up in L.A. I grew oh, up in you grew Valley. up in L.A.? Mm-hmm. Really? Me too. Yeah. Where, where were you born? Uh, I was born in Cedar sinai Whoa. I've heard of it. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, did you leave and come back, or are you still here? I Well, I went away to college in Berkeley, and I, I've lived in New York. I've lived in London. I've lived out of the country. Um, but, yeah, back in L.A. for the last six years. Welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> what, uh, what, what got you involved in the birth world? You know, that's an interesting question. I feel like it was a calling. And I know, you know, that sounds pretty esoteric, but it was like I I met a doula actually right when I moved back to L.A. from New York. And just as soon as I met her, I just felt like she had this she embodied this quality that I wanted to be able to touch in myself. And I couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't put words to it. I'd never heard of what a doula was before. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, it just so happened that the woman that had trained her, Judy Chapman, had a training the following weekend. And the minute I set foot in that training and heard Judy speak, it just, I just felt it in my body. I was like, this is, this is what I need to do. I feel like for the first time it put me in touch with what it means to be female in a way that we're not taught, you know, we're taught how to have power Mm -hmm if we can have the kind of power that men have or we're taught how to have power if we can be sexy and and appeal to a man's taste in that way but we're not really taught the really primal embodied raw power that is what it what it is to be female and that's that's what you see in the birth room and you had already done nutrition before that uh, I had, well, I've been studying nutrition for many years. Um, you know a lot when it comes to nutrition. <laughs> well, I thank throw you. stuff at you all the time. You're just like, oh, yeah, gestational <laughs> thrombocytopenia. Who doesn't know about that? Well, know. my my undergraduate degree is in psychoneuroimmunology. So that was just a really fancy way of saying the mind body connection. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of nutrition studies, um, you know, in my 20s also because I was raised vegetarian. And so trying to be a dancer and an athlete on a vegetarian diet living in the dorms presented its own challenges. So I had to kind of become an expert. I think we've all Um, had that problem. (laughs) 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 Um, But yeah, then uh, it was actually after becoming a doula that I studied with the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and became a holistic health counselor. Well, I want to talk about if it's cool with you guys. I want to go through uh, through a pregnancy. It's amazing, by the way. You, you don't have kids either, right? Mm-hmm. It's amazing to me. Not that we me. know of. No. No kiddos. Not that we know of. Yeah, sometimes the guys don't tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's amazing to me and also very exciting that that more and more young women are getting into, you know, interested in pregnancy and birth and studying it beforehand because... It's kind of on the heels of a generation that just kind of was used to doing whatever their doctors told them to yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think medicine had was more individualistic in our parents' time, and and the motivations were were mostly about the patient. And now things have changed so much, yeah. um, and we're coming off a generation that just was led into pregnancy and birth experiences that people wanted them to have, even mm-hmm. if it's not what they wanted to have. So it's really exciting to see now people 
way before getting pregnant and going through the pregnancy, really getting informed and empowered and spreading that to uh, to your peers. Very cool. I'd love to go through uh, just, you know, a model pregnancy, you know, in the next 25 <laughs> minutes. Let's, <laughs> let's take it through what it would be like. Uh, first trimester, um, you know, there's a whole lot of, in terms of exercise, physical fitness and exercise, where do you guys sit on that? A lot of people, especially with a lot of assisted reproductive technologies going mm-hmm. on, uh, you know, it was hard to get that little nugget in there. Very, you know, they're afraid sometimes to get yeah. out of bed and go pee. So where does where do we sit with exercise in the first trimester? Is it delicate? Do we have to be really careful? Is that thing going to fall out? Well, I think... If they haven't had any IVF or any assistant medical assistance, then most of the women just continue as they were doing. Mm -hmm. Um, If they contact us and they set up a consultation, we go through like some of the exercises to avoid during pregnancy, even during that first trimester, like no sit ups, no crunches, no toes to bar, no knees to elbows, that kind of stuff. That sounds like a dream. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But. you know, I don't think there's enough research done on IVF yet. And, um, you know, we've worked with some people where their doctors are like, yeah, go ahead, continue um, whatever you're doing. And then other doctors, um, they're like, no, wait till you're 12 weeks or 15 weeks before doing any kind of exercise again. Um, so at that What if you weren't doing anything? If they weren't doing anything, we would just say, hey, wait, um, let's get out of the first trimester and let's set up a consultation when you're around 12 to 15 weeks. Okay, so continue what what you're already doing, whether you were doing or not. Mm -hmm. And then if you weren't, then pick it up in a second once you're out of the woods, quote unquote. And if they're doing IVF, like we basically say refer to your doctor for this. Um, it's pr- probably we'll smart, but yeah. I know you guys are going to end up doing the research, so that's okay. <laughs> we what? were just talking to somebody today about See? research. I knew it. Uh, what about nausea and vomiting? Very common first trimester uh, ailment. Um, do you let it slow you down? The we- you know sometimes lo- low energy, or or is yeah. maybe the opposite. Can exercise help you overcome those symptoms? Right. For the most part, I think um, you know our general population. They're part of the. 95 percent complication free pregnancies and you know if they feel pretty shitty in the morning they'll usually go for a walk um eat some kind of high protein snack and just a little bit of movement helps them a little bit yeah Mm -hmm. um and i i mean we've had some where they're like i don't feel like doing anything yeah and they just don't and they pick back up you know i think the second try yeah like the most important thing is just being in communication with your trainer. Like if you don't feel well mm-hmm. and you don't think you can do the thing, we can push. Hmm. So you're the philosophy that you listen to your body. So weird, right? Strange. I know. <laughs> hmm. Well, you said something interesting. You said be, be in communication with your trainer. And I'm just curious for a woman who maybe is listening who doesn't have a trainer. Right. How does she know whether it's one of those days where she's going to go outside and Mm. taking a walk and it's going to help or whether it's time to just lie down and nap and take a rest yeah that's a really hard question i think um what we as birth people try to help with and especially as birth is like really understanding your body and knowing your body um and it's, it's amazing how many people just have zero connection right um so if we can go along with the fitness and the mindset and everything that BirthFit is all about and, you know, share that, um, you you will have a good sense of when it's okay and when it's not okay. But, you know, you, you never really know. I can't speak for somebody else's body also. Right. Um, we tough. do a little exercise where, um, like, let's say they're working with us remotely. Um, they're instructed to keep a journal. And even if it's a smiley face or a line with, you know, a indifferent face or a sad face they're supposed to write down how they feel when they wake up you know in today's day and age there's 500 <laughs> emojis to choose from there's a lot of emojis <laughs> yeah. out there <laughs> and a lot of feelings the monkey emojis um, today you know and uh basically you know write a little bit about how you feel in the morning write a little bit about how you feel after you move whether it's exercise or just a walk or whatever and if that hasn't changed, then maybe the next day you don't exercise. Maybe you just work on recovery. And we speak a lot, not only just taking the day off, but recovery is a huge deal because you're not only growing a human, but you're building an organ. And 
recovery is just as important as training, as moving, as mm-hmm. sleeping, as whatever you're putting in your body. So go to the chiropractor, get a massage, go to the float tank, do something, you know. Hmm, what do you do in the float tank? You float. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. That's huge. So what you're saying by kind of tracking um, the experience in real time, you can kind of learn how to connect with your body. Mm-hmm. If and it's so simple, like just smiley faces. Um or sad faces, mm-hmm. or pissed off faces. Yeah, <laughs> um, you get a little window as to you know. Okay, if I wake up and I put tired, then that's obviously maybe I shouldn't do the most intense workout. I'm going to do that week that day. You know, and I think that's especially important for the women who hadn't been exercising before pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, that makes sense. This is double important now because you know you're pregnant and you're starting fitness. Let's say all of a sudden, uh, second trimester, boom, <laughs> just like that. Uh, now the people who weren't exercising, you can you can start exercising with them. You can get them get them moving. Yeah, second trimester is usually like the fun time. Like, yeah, people have all this energy. They're like love being pregnant. Um, <laughs> They haven't reached that super big belly state where they're like, oh, my God, get this out of me. Right. Um, even during that time, some women will set what we call PRs or personal records. Oh. And it's just because they are they feel great. Uh, they've been moving. They're eating well. Like They're like, I could stay pregnant forever. <laughs> and they're like, oh. More energy than before the pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. go from like energy to really low energy first yeah. trimester to like even more than you had before yeah. sometimes, right? So, yeah. So you break your goals. Awesome. Yeah. And in, but uh, I hear this recommendation, you know, you, but maybe you have about heart rates or maybe you don't heart rates, or you got to be able to carry on casual conversation. Like you don't mm-hmm. want to get more winded than that. The casual uh, conversation is a good yeah. indicator, but, um, that's walking to the fridge for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, heart breath. rate's going to vary from person to person. It's going to differ based on your DNA. Um, like my heart rate's going to differ from Imbos, who's, you know, almost 10 years younger than me. Um, my heart rate's going to differ from, let's say, uh, you know, an Olympic athlete that's training through her pregnancy. Um, Is there a calculation, though, based on age and, and fitness I mean, level? If So when we consult with women, if they want to take their heart rate, they're only allowed to compare their heart rate against like use it in comparison for themselves. Right. So take your heart rate in the morning, take your heart rate during exercise, take your heart rate 30 minutes afterwards, um, and have those numbers. So you're starting not only with the smiley faces, but you have numbers that you're starting to get a window into your, your body, um, as to how it works, how it feels, how it's operating, um, and go from there. And then is there a target number that you recommend in terms of like, 85% 85% of maximum capacity or don't don't exceed a yeah. certain percent? Um, I mean, so in our training, we train like remotely. In person, it's a little bit different. Um, but we train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And each one of those days has a warm-up, a posture and awareness focus, a quality situation, um, <clears throat> strength, conditioning, and accessory work. And within the conditioning, there's either... You know, an interval training day, which at the highest would be 80 to 90 percent intensity or output. Maybe there's um, a longer sled pulling, longer hike day, which would range from anywhere from like 30 minutes to like three hours. And that's a long like aerobic type of day. Mm. Um, Other days would just be maybe a 15 minute kind of glycolytic. Um, Yeah, so just something sustainable for about 70 percent. So it's going to be varied all week. And we do that because we don't know if birth is going to be three days or three hours. Like it's going to involve all three energy pathways. Um, so if you're, if you don't have that sustainability in each of those three energy pathways, then it's going to be a little bit difficult. What are the three pathways? Uh, phosphogen, glycolytic and aerobic. Can you describe what each is? (laughs) (laughs) For those of us that without the science background. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Phosphogen 10 to 15 minutes. No. That's phosphogen <laughs> is like zero to 10 seconds. Yeah. So that would be sprinting, maybe a one rep max lift, um, as high as you can box jump, just like, uh, so that would equate like what you're doing when you're pushing, pushing. The yeah. Totally. Okay. Um, the next would be glycolytic, which would be the 10 to 15 minute. Uh, I think that's like from 10 seconds yeah. to like seven minutes. Yeah. So it's like the medium. So yeah. like a contraction. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. 
Um, and then aerobic would be a long haul. Yeah, yeah. like a marathon. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And um, I think to circle back and answer your question, yeah. it's it's the heart rate thing is important to you if it's important to you. Yeah, that's a great you know, answer. If it's not if it's not important to you and you've are healthy and you've maintained good health for a long time and throughout this pregnancy, I wouldn't worry about it. If you, right. if you feel it necessary to record it, but I don't think there's anything to compare it to or like a target because everybody's different. So you were more, again, going back to your how you feel, being Intuition. in touch with your body. Yeah. And, and, and so like if you're working out second trimester and you feel aches and pains, uh, n- normally some of those aches and pains you you plow through them right if it's if things feel achy you want to push through that but sometimes it's like no that one is you need to take a rest Mm -hmm. absolutely how do you how do you decipher man um (laughs) so regardless of whether or not you're pregnant it's like is this pain or am i sore or am i pushing it am i suffering or is this like feeling the burn like what is that pain and again that goes along with this like mind body connection um it's that's a hard one to learn. And what about, I mean, you guys are in touch with your bodies. Yes. But what about somebody who just isn't? I right. Say, yeah. For so, let's like we've had tons of women come to us and they're like second trimester, I'm ready to be birth fit. Like, mm-hmm. great. What have you done? I've done a yoga class here <laughs> yeah. and there. Yeah. Like, okay. So it's definitely harder for them to differentiate like muscle soreness mm-hmm. versus pain. Um, and I'm sure you see it like I see it in chiropractic too. Like where somebody comes in the next day after they had their first adjustment ever and they're like, oh my God, I was that was so painful last night. Well, can you describe the pain? Yeah. You know, like, um, so it's really getting in touch with your body again and like pain, discomfort, all of that is your body's way of communicating to you. And, um, you know, one of the biggest things I use is, um, you know, if it's uncomfortable right now, we don't have to do it. If it, let's say, okay, if maybe a lunge on the left leg feels uncomfortable, then cool. Let's not do it. We'll revisit it later. We'll come back to it two days later. If it's still uncomfortable, then get in to see the chiropractor mm-hmm. because that pain or discomfort shouldn't really be Something's there. Off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, that goes back again to this being in communication with your trainer, regard, like whoever your trainer may be, yeah. you know, if it's remote with Lindsay or if it's in person or if it's your partner you say this didn't feel good today okay can you describe what that was like yeah like just talking through what was going on kind of helps people decipher a few more what is going on or if you're your own trainer just being in communication with yourself yeah about it yeah yeah try to use a few more descriptive words besides just pain or that hurts or because that doesn't really does describe the situation yeah. and i can really not. see that would be such a good skill to develop before labor because mm-hmm. we, oh, we yeah. say that you know the the experience of birthing and the sensation yeah. of birthing is pain with a purpose it's different than breaking yeah. an arm or breaking totally. a leg. Yeah. um all right you guys post or <laughs> somebody posts uh, with a hashtag birth fit uh <laughs> these crazy pictures only crazy because we haven't seen them before uh, of super fit women with like a with like a six month bump, you know, crushing heavy weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So first of all, when's the birth fit calendar coming out? That's my first question. <laughs> oh my god. I'll be an Bikini awesome birth calendar. <laughs> yes. Um, second of all, That's uh, you know, w- what's the deal with lifting heavy weight? Sometimes we see the guideline, you know, never pick up more than what your newborn baby's going to weigh yeah. and oh, things geez. like that. And so that would be a big ass baby based on yeah. the pictures you guys are posting. Um, 300 well, pound baby. Yeah, that's big. what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a great book out there called Exercising Through Your Pregnancy, which is um, written by an MD, Dr. James Clapp. And I don't know why people just haven't read this book. It talks about training, talks about strength training, talks about training in the postpartum. Um, But you know, like everything in in our world takes about 15 years to start to implement. Um, (laughs) uh, There's what's uh, like, let's say my PR deadlift is 300 and something pounds. So is Embos. So for us to be lifting 150 pounds would be 50% of our max. So everybody's strength and their capabilities varies um so you people have to remember that like what's light for me what's heavy for embo all is all over the place Mm -hmm. and um you know i've never been one to put limitations on like human capabilities and just the more or 
the more I dug, the more like I found there was nothing to support really that those kind of claims. Don't lift over a certain amount. Don't do this. Um, this is this is for people who have been lifting beforehand, or do you start weight training like? We'll start both. Yeah. Um, and we take it we take it really slow. Um, we make sure they have a solid base, a solid foundation from which to build upon. Yeah. And um, you know, like we were talking about earlier. Um, if there's a heavy single or if there's a set of squats or something, there's always a reference as to intensity, what it should feel like. And, um, you know, we only take certain three or four lifts above 80 percent. And those lifts are something mom has got to be confident that she's no, she's going to make. And this is not only to protect her from a musculoskeletal injury, because that would suck if you were pregnant. Sure. But also to like build her confidence. Because there's no reason to go into the gym, you know, you're training, you're building your confidence, you're training for birth, and you get up and you try to do this back squat and you have to drop the bar behind you because you just weren't being responsible. Well, not only does that set you up for maybe, you know, a little back tweak or something, but it's also going to diminish your confidence. And the next time you step up to that bar, you're already 10 steps behind where you started that time. And Nobody wants to be disempowered, if that's a word, before you go into labor. I think yeah. that's a word. I think so, too. You um, but you're, you can go the opposite. You take people who never believe they can lift weight or... Um, oh, yeah. And, and you can take them each second trimester and have them start working out and, and pump an iron. Yeah. And then by the time they get there, they, they probably feel like there's nothing, I had a nothing woman they can't do. who came to us at 36 weeks. And she's yeah. like, I'm a little late, but I want to be birth fit. And we're like, all right, like, <laughs> let's do this. And wow, <laughs> it was it was awesome. And we put her on the training bar and like, yeah. And it you looks know, like a lot of weight, but it's what was not. cool is oh, that's between that's what I need. Yeah. 36 weeks and 40. I think she went to 41 weeks. You know, she gained more weight or felt heavier, whatever it may be. And she's like, I just can walk up the stairs and not have it suck. Oh, that's amazing. And I was mm-hmm. like, sweet. That's literally like why we're doing this. At 36, you feel good. When, when you usually hear the opposite, I feel opposite. like a whale. I can't she's move. She's like, I I'm feel waddling. so good walking up the stairs because we've been squatting oh, and I'm amazing. moving my legs. And I was like, that that is it. That and she really, had a three day labor. Yeah. And she's like, I can do that. You know, she, wow. she had all this confidence. Yeah. I was like, dude, you're 36 weeks pregnant. And all the guys here are watching you like, oh my God, <laughs> this is awesome. You know? And just like, I don't know why people would say don't lift weights. Well, I think part of it is the the role of relaxin, especially later in pregnancy when True. all the connective tissue kind of loosens and things aren't held together as much. What, what do you see in terms of correlation with well, the increase in relaxin and risk for injury? So I actually see, I don't know if you can answer this as well, but relaxin is more, has more of an influence on ligaments and rather than muscles. Um, and for those that don't have any strength base, maybe they're su- like super flexible. I see them as having more pain and discomfort throughout their pregnancy um, as a chiropractor. Um, that said, it relaxing will be circulating around, but I don't see it as posing any more of a threat than somebody, than a woman during her time of the month um, because also associated with ACL injuries is, you know, when it's my time of the month, ligaments are going to be more lax and that's like, that's when I tore my ACL. That's when most, you know, ligament t- tears happen. Um, it's just if they don't have a really solid base, a strength base, then I see more pain and discomfort associated with that. Relaxing. Well, that, that's a really good association in terms of, you know, having to be more careful around a certain time of month and pregnancy. And would you say that, that that is a valid concern? Because the same way you might need to be more careful when you're menstruating because of the relaxing, would, would there be certain instances if you're, if you're feeling particularly open to maybe back off? Yeah, I mean, and that goes back to like being intuitive. Um, I think you're going to, there's days you're going to wake up where you're like, oh, I just don't feel like myself. Um, Mm -hmm. And I get those days now and I'm just like, okay, today's not a day to like test my one rep max back. Yeah. Um, So I think developing a relationship, not only with your coach, but with deep with inside yourself is like the main goal here. And um, I don't know if relaxing is really a, I mean, it's there along with, you know, really bad drivers out there and shitty diets. Like, they're mm-hmm. going to influence just as much. I always put yeah. those in the same category, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, relaxing makes my job easy. I think that's why <laughs> that's why I became a prenatal chiropractor. Everything releases so easy. Yeah. On super pregnant women. Um, but, I, you know, I imagine it, it, is, it does affect the ligament. So the joints will become mm-hmm. less stable. And as you get more and more pregnant, sometimes that instability causes symptoms that if the muscles can kick in a little bit as stabilizers, mm-hmm. you know, if they get a little bit more fit, then they can, um, they can create that balance that maybe you're losing. Um, I do imagine towards the period of pregnancy, you're more likely to to injure a joint, to overstrain a joint. I think um, what ends up happening is people, like, besides her, the lady who was 36 <laughs> weeks, but most people progress throughout their pregnancy and they get, um, you know, running becomes uncomfortable mm-hmm. or jumping becomes uncomfortable. Things just become uncomfortable and that's their body's way of saying, hey, let's take it down a Slow notch. Down. Yeah. Third trimester, getting ready for birth, <laughs> right? Yeah. S- to squat or not to squat, that is the question. Yeah, I mean, one of our biggest things is to squat um, all the time because squatting opens up the birth canal by as much as 30%. Um, and that's, you know, with weight, without weight, sitting in the bottom of a squat, watching TV in the bottom just of a squat. Just waiting in line at rail, squat. Yeah. yeah. Just wherever you are, just <laughs> like keep it open. Squats. Just duck walking deep squats, all the way. not so deep. Yeah. Um, open it. All the way. Open yeah. it. Um, I forgot what I was going to What say, about but... Kegels? What about Kegels? Oh, wait, I'm still on squats. Is, <laughs> is there a proper way to squat? Like, should oh. is there any precaution someone should take to protect their knees, perhaps? Well, I mean, if you're squatting with a barbell, uh, we want mom to, like, send her booty back, keep whole foot on the ground, keep your spine engaged, keep your chest up. Um, it's actually better for your knees if you squat all the way down. Yeah. As opposed to stopping at parallel. Yeah, stopping at parallel. Your joint. And should the feet be parallel or can you turn out your feet? Well, that's going to depend on the person yeah. d- and their hip situation. Both mm-hmm. are good. Um, cool. Yeah. I'm Kegels? a parallel squatter. Some you people are? are turn out squatters. I'm a little turned out because I got tight hips from <laughs> soccer. Oh, don't be, don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> Elliot wants to know about Kegels. What, what's the I really want to know about Kegels. I think they were all the rave for quite some time, but then, uh, you know... Early in my birth fit career, I had a lot of moms that would say, I'm doing these damn Kegels all day and I'm still peeing in my pants. Mm. And, you know, it's just because they lack glute activation. I think Kegels have their place, but I also think glute activation is really important. And by activation, you just mean glute strength? Yeah. Like actually having that neural connection from your brain down to your gluteus maximus. To help you not pee? Yeah, to lift up that sacrum off the oh, off organs. The, oh, nice. And in terms of Kegels in preparation for birth, would you say is there anything as being is there any such thing as being too tight? Like, do you sometimes see women where they get so muscular that that softness and the suppleness and the openness isn't there? No, um, I actually wrote a blog about this, and I think Dr. Elliot read it. Um, you guys, I did. a lot of people think, oh, you can be too fit, but. To me, my definition of fit is having full range of motion in all joints, having strength, having flexibility, having as much grace as you do strength, Um, being able to endure a marathon as much as a strongman competition. Like, Mm -hmm. that's my view of fitness. Um, So to define fit would be, that would be the starting point. Um, Too often I see where people train very one dimensional and that's what um, sets their pelvis up maybe not for success maybe they're on a spin bike six days a week and then they go sit in their office and they're just shortening those hip flexors um, or maybe they just all they do is run and there's no side to side action there's no stretching there's no hip range of motion happening um, so that's kind of what I see there um, we don't ever really tell anybody to do kegels for labor and delivery we basically have them squat, walk a shit ton. Um, exactly. Yeah. How many is that? Uh, how much? It's what a is the big metric? metric. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I I would agree with you about the um, about the pelvis. I think that if you have a strong pelvis, it's great. Yeah. I think some of the best births I've seen are with women who have really strong athletic pelvis. But if you have a strong and tight pelvis, you could run into trouble because the right. tightness on someone who's strong is more restrictive than the tightness on somebody who's weak. And I think that, like, this could be a whole discussion. I think that's more related to mindset than anything. I think it's super controlling personality. Maybe they are dialed on their schedule, like maybe type A personality where 
they're it's really hard for them to surrender to the whole process mm -hmm. but that's such an important point that Dr. B's making in the sense that if you're strong and tight, it actually sets you back more in a labor than if you're just kind of uptight, but maybe don't have as much muscle mass supporting that tension. So how can a woman enhance the dexterity or the suppleness and the, the flexibility of her pelvis as she is developing the strength? strength? Yeah. Yeah. Range of motion is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, That's I mean, why we squat all the time. Yeah. As much I'm gonna as, start squatting. as important as times. like the strength and the conditioning portions are. You know, so too are the accessory work and the quality work that we spend on, you know, opening up our pelvis, opening up our hips, opening up our chest, um, just because we set a lot of range of motion stuff up in our training and learning just to breathe through that is part of it. Yeah. And if you're extremely tight in your hips, it's probably not because you just started back squatting with us, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've probably been tight your whole life. Yeah. Like go get a massage or see a chiropractor. There's, there's something else going on. Amen, sister. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a whole